Welcome to Inside Russia. My name is Konstantin and I'm giving you another daily update on what is happening in Russia. Thank you very much for joining. Going to be an interesting topic today. Thank you. Mots, could you please give me a five by five if you can hear and see me well. I can see you. Uh, I can see myself well. I can hear myself. I can see myself. That's good. So we shall go and start. Lorna, thank you for five by five. As usual, I'm delivering the message for the first half of the stream, about 20 to 30 minutes. And then I turn on the comments so we can converse. I can um, read your comments and I can answer them if you have any questions. <laughs> Without further ado, let's jump right into the topic. My friends, do you know, do you know how it is to be surrounded by the enemies? Have you ever lived in the country that was surrounded by the enemies? The enemy states bloodthirsty countries with bloodthirsty people who wanted to get you, to get you personally, to get your families, to get your kids. Have you ever, I did and I have, um, I would like to tell you my story and I would like to tell you a story of Soviet Union in Russia and I would like to tell you that Russia, for the most part, well, I'm talking about the USSR, then Russia, for the most part, has been surrounded by the state's neighbors that accidentally were enemies. Or at least quite a few of them. Now, in order to understand what I'm talking about, it's not nonsense, just give me a few minutes to explain. In order for you to understand let's take a few steps back into the birth of the USSR. 1917, um, the Bolshevik Revolution, then following years, bloodshed called uh, civil war in Russia, and basically what was happening in the following years, the Bolsheviks were uh, taking power, consolidating power in their hands. And they finally did, it took them quite a few years, but then you cannot just take over country as big as Russia in just a few short years, okay? Uh, you cannot force people to abandon God. And the Bolsheviks were trying to do that. They were forcing people to give up God. You cannot give up people to... Um, you cannot force people to give up their businesses, okay? You cannot force people to change their lifestyle completely. A lots of Russians, or people who lived in the former Russian Empire, they didn't like Bolsheviks and they didn't like their ways, so they were against. Those people needed to be taught a lesson. What is a lesson in Bolsheviks' eyes? Death, penalty, capital uh, punishment. Quick capital punishment, you know. Uh, no trial, no court, you know, just very uh, few people get together, like Troika, three people. Uh, they arrest someone, they sign a protocol that the person is an enemy of the state, and they just shoot him right on the spot. That's how it was done. Back in the 20s, and I think even in the early 30s. And then in the late 30s, there was KGB born, and oh boy, KGB was was um, doing things, you know. Joseph Stalin was the big boss of the Soviet state, and then he was not the friendliest, and he was not the uh, the, the the merciest <laughs> guy, you know. But how do you actually convince? people that the person needs to be executed well it's very simple what kind of crime very simple a person must work 
for an enemy state, for intelligence of an enemy state. The person must be traitor. The person must be uh, part of the enemy state. <laughs> but in order <laughs> to do that, you actually have to have enemy states surrounding you. And in my mind, that's how the concept of Russia, Soviet Union, being surrounded by the enemies was born. The enemies simply were needed to justify the actions inside of the country. Who were the enemies? Japan, imperialistic countries, Japan, um, Great Britain, Germany, France, the United States of America. Um, that was enough. Oh boy. Quite a few million of Russians were actually executed. We call it the Big Red Terror. Terror against all people. Krasny Terror. Then World War II followed. <laughs> no one was executed because people were actually united, uh, unified in fighting the Nazis. Okay. This uh, enemies of the state were forgotten because former enemies of the state were helping the Soviet Union, like Great Britain, like uh, the United States. Um, not the enemies anymore. They're partners. The United States was given land lease to Soviet Union. Whole different story. So the enemy states were for 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 forgotten until late 50s. And then they came back with a bang. Why? For the same reason. You see, there's a, when your country is not doing well, financially, economically, politically, I don't know, not well in different departments, then you got to come up with something to justify that unwellness. And what is the best way to justify as to announce that it's not our fault? It's not the government's fault. It's not people's fault. But we're merely victims. Victims by uh, work performed by the enemy states that surround Soviet Union. Um, very easy explanation. Very effective. And people actually fall for it because they don't know better. They don't travel outside. They don't go and see how it is actually in the enemy states. And... You know, a propaganda machine can create any picture it wants to. <sighs> so, enemy states were back in the picture again, and they actually existed from the 60s, early 60s, all the way through 1991. People were not ex executed anymore, they were not shot, but This idea of enemy of the enemies of the state, uh, enemy countries, um, enemy states, evolved. It transformed into this um, sort of a national idea that the United States is fighting a coalition of the bad guys. And all people, there's no time for actually complaining. Yes. Uh, there are some things inside of Soviet Union that might be bad, like this deficit of different kinds of products, of different kinds of foods. But hey, we're not starving, right? We, we all have shelter somehow. We have something to wear. Granted, quality is not that high. But you know what? We have a much bigger problem, much bigger goal. We are fighting off the enemy states that surround us. They want to take control us, uh, over us. They want to destroy Soviet Union. They want to see it bad inside of our country, okay? And we need to withstand that. We need to fight that. You know, kind of tighten your belts. No big deal. But, you know, we will prevail. We will win. And this ideology, I still remember. I was a child and I was immersed in this thing in the 80s. It was not as strong as the 60s and the 70s, but early 80s was actually strong. But then later 80s, we started understanding, hey, there's something wrong, okay? <laughs> there's something very, very wrong, because these enemy states there might 
not turn out to be as bad as they're portrayed to be, okay? Um, different kinds of information, uh, streaks, streams started seeping into the USSR. We started actually thinking and comparing and saying, hey, wait a second. There's something fishy. We've been lied here, okay? And, you know, 1991 comes, the Soviet Union falls apart because all Russians actually come to the streets and knock down that country, okay? So, the second stage was, I would say, 57, 58 through 1991. And then, all of a sudden, we woke up free men. We woke up without any enemies that surround us. We realized that the enemies that we were being told they were our enemies... NATO countries, you know, just um, capitalist countries, well, really countries with free market economy, but we didn't say that back then, just capitalistic or imperialistic countries, that's how they were called. So anyway, those countries weren't bad, they were actually good, <laughs> they were good guys, and many, like, the floodgate was open, lots of people started visiting the, Russia, you know, and all of a sudden, we could actually talk to foreigners from those countries, from the enemy states. Apparently, you know, in the USSR, it was considered that most people in the enemy states were our enemies, okay? They bloodthirsty vampires. They wanted to kill us. They wanted to, I don't know, destroy us. All of a sudden, these people come, and they turn out to be regular folks, Christians, not the vampires, um, not bloodthirsty, <laughs> definitely, and they smile, they behave nicely, okay? They bring us things that we never thought existed. And that lasted for quite, quite a few years. Throughout 90s, no one, the United States was the good guy from being like uh, the pariah. <laughs> All of a sudden, our partner, our friend, and even our mentor in some things, you know? And it was a good time. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. It's like uh, breathing fresh air. It was liberating. We had a feeling that everything's going to be great from now on. Future is just fantastic. And uh, we had lots of problems in the 90s. Internally, um, economically, like um, problems with lack of water, I would say. And, but we overcame. In about 10 years, things started getting better and started improving money-wise. You know, starting from 2002, things were actually looking very, very good. They, uh, from, uh, from 2000, I would say, to 2012, we had won the years, the golden years, the rich years, the best time Russia ever saw. No enemies. Everyone was making money. Money was flowing because oil was going up high and the government was not strong enough to take, seize all that money <laughs> for itself, you know. So some of the money was um, making its way to uh, regular people. That's why we were just, just doing fantastic. And all of a sudden, 2012 came, well, late 2011, and I heard that music again about we are surrounded by um, no good doers, let's put it this way. The word enemy did not pop up until February 24th of 2022. In the last four months, I've heard it thousands of times that we're surrounded by enemies and so forth. But before, uh, Vladimir Putin was doing a rally to, uh, he was participating in a presidential election, in 2012, and he was doing a lot of public debates, and one of the debates, I think he was even speaking to, uh, don't quote me on that, but I think, I think, uh, one of the, uh, he was answering questions of an uh, American reporter, or a few reporters, and he was very sarcastic about the, about the United States, and his message was this, the USA finally showed its true faith, face, and it's not so friendly, okay, and he called the USA our friends and partners, partners, okay, 
But the message was clear. Those folks are not friends and partners. They are competitors at least, okay? And they're not really interested in Russia succeeding. The message started at that time that I was seeing uh, his interview, his rally. You know, I thought, I've seen this before. You know, I heard that music. (laughs) But then it wasn't bad. 2012 came, he became the president again for the third time. Um, 2014 came, you know, Crimea, Donbass, uh, things started heating up, Russia was uh, under sanctions, but still, the countries around us, the NATO countries, were not the enemies, they were called partners, partners, but we understood they're not partners anymore, they're just, they're different camp, but not enemies, and it lasted for quite a few years, and all of a sudden, You know the story. I mean, I don't have to tell you what has happened recently. 24th of February comes of this year, and unthinkable happens. A tragedy happens, starts happening. And all of a sudden, the masks are off, okay? The countries of NATO bloc, the countries that surround us and they don't support us, are called unfriendly countries. But... We all know what unfriendly countries mean. And officially, I have not heard the enemy countries, but uh, just unfriendly countries, but or countries uh, unfriendly to Russia. But informally, from people, from different uh, media channels, Telegram channels, and so forth, um, people are not shy to call some countries enemy, enemy states and are enemies, okay? So, there we go again. We are surrounded by the enemies all over again. Is the USSR back? I don't think so. At least not yet. But so many features that were a part of the USSR are back. And they're back with a bang. And... Being surrounded by the enemies is definitely one of them. Well, now, lots of Russians actually believe that. Because lots of Russians have never been outside of Russia. They don't really know. They don't know the truth. They don't know what's going on in the uh, so-called unfriendly country. By the way, I'm going to give you the list of unfriendly countries. There are currently 48 countries in the world that are unfriendly. And they are Australia, Albania, Andorra, Great Britain, Iceland, Canada, Liechtenstein, Micronesia, Monaco, New Zealand, Norway, uh, South Korea, San Marino, uh, Northern Macedonia, Singapore, the United States of America, Taiwan, Ukraine, obviously, uh, Montenegro, Swiss, Japan, and European Union, including Austria, Belgium, Bulgaria, Hungary, Germany, Greek, Denmark, Ireland, Spain, Italy, Cyprus, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Netherlands, Poland, Portugal, (laughs) Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Finland, France, Croatia, Czech Republic, Sweden and Estonia, they are officially unfriendly countries since March 5th. (sighs) My friends, um, now listen to me very carefully. I can be told, I can be told, many things. I can be told that I am, my face is butt ugly. I can be told that I'm fat. I can be told that I'm stupid. I can be told that I'm dark-minded or whatever. But please, do not ever, ever tell me that these countries that are in the list that I just read you are unfriendly or enemy countries that want no good for Russia. Don't don't even try. Don't ever tell me that because that is BS. Because you know what? I've been around. 
I've been out of Russia and I've been to most of these countries, quite a few of them on multiple occasions. I lived outside of Russia in those countries for about 13 years combined. And you know what? I did not see one act of unfriendliness, one wish of unfriendliness for Russia, one um, action of unfriendliness, none. Most countries don't really care. They don't know where Russia is. And quite a few countries, actually, the people of those countries, they like Russians, or they liked Russians before. Okay, so uh, this is BS. I... Um, It's becoming really, really strange feeling to live in Russia that's surrounded by countries that no good, that don't want, don't wish anything well for Russia, anything good for Russia. And the number of countries is growing. For example, merely four months ago, Sweden and, and Finland, they were okay. They were friends. They were partners. Gosh, for Finland, we were helping to build a nuclear station called Hanghikivi. Oh, I know very well my company was taking a part of that project. You don't build nuclear power station to um, an unfriendly state or an enemy, right? Doesn't make any sense unless you're absolutely crazy. But now, Finland and Sweden in the recent past, neutral countries with great people, peaceful people. Uh, no one can even think of them being aggressive or trying to attack anyone or <laughs> something like that. All of a sudden, they are an unfriendly states, unfriendly states to Russia. Wow. Why is this happening? I've said many times that uh, well, I don't even know where to start. Um, you see, some actions need to be justified. How do you justify them? In the best, most effective, most powerful way. Well, you, talk, you take the old Soviet manual, you know, from a somewhere upper shelf, it's covered with dust, open it, blow the dust off of it, like that, and read the manual and do what the manual says. If people have not been outside of Russia, if they haven't traveled much, if they don't know anyone <laughs> from those countries, they believe anything. You could sell them any, any, any idea, okay? Um, and they buy it. Will they buy this time? Well, you know what? Time will tell. Will this idea be sold to Russians? Time will tell. Will they believe in this um, thing that Russia is surrounded by enemies? Time will tell. But I will tell you one good thing. You know what I've learned from all my 66, 46 years of living? If everyone around you doesn't seem friendly to you. If everyone, literally everyone around you tries to poke you, tries to, uh, you know, make a bad joke about you, does actions that hurt you, does actions that diminish you, okay? If you feel like an outcast in the company of 100 people, your neighbors, your colleagues, your co-workers, you know, in no matter where you go, no matter, you will find people who want to hurt you, take advantage of you, okay? Perhaps it's not them. Perhaps there's something about you. How about this for an idea to think about? My friends, this has been the message. Um... I have told you what has happening in Russia, a little bit of history and a little bit of present time, present day, not even looking into the future. I'm saying, hey, I'm not a forecaster. Time will tell. We will see. But um, 
This is what's happening. Yesterday in the stream, I said that today, after, after this stream today, will be a premiere. Have not been able to finish editing a new video. It's very complicated. Um, there are about 108 scenes so far, and I'm still editing. So perhaps tomorrow, if I am hoping, I am hoping that I'll be able to finish. So if I finish, there will be premiere. No premiere today. And before I turn the comments on, I would like to ask you, um, I would like to ask you to keep this chat civil, uh, clean. And there are a few rules I'd like to tell you. Uh, common sense is the king. Think before you comment. Think before you write something. No snide crude remarks and or hostile comments. No crude usernames. English only. No trolls. Don't even think about it. Subscribers only. This chat is for subscribers. Um, there are a few topics that are forbidden. Please do not touch them. There are they are everything about Ukraine. There are other times and places to talk about Ukraine. Not, not here, not right now. Um, everything referring to the actions of the Russian army in Ukraine and number of casualties in Ukraine and in the Russian army. Also, please refrain from the criticism of Russian leadership. That's it. Everything else is okay. And I am turning on the comments will be fantastic to converse with you and hear your opinions. There you go, chat's on. Reese Gray is number one. <laughs> All right. Reese, Dirk, Mommy, Robert Bates, May Rag, Toro 8 Star, Kyle, IKDA, Golden Griffon, Geeky Carlis, Cho 4D, um, Scott, Sylvia, the usual suspects. Welcome. Thank you very much for coming back. Not seeing Lorna. Is she here? Mommy. My friends, if you want me to notice your comment, please put it in caps so I see it. Otherwise, there are good chances I won't. I'll skip it. I won't see it. Thank you very much, Reese Gray. Thank you. Hello from Canada, Mr. Popular. If a country is too busy blaming other nations for their problems, that they will never be able to look inward to resolve internal problems. Reese, I'm going to take your statement one step further. You see, if the country is too busy blaming other nations for their problems, they will never be able to. No, they don't want to take a look inward to resolve internal problems. Because all the internal problems are artificially created and everything is planned, okay? So the country doesn't want anyone to look inwards. The attention, the focus of attention must be out somewhere. So there's no time, no desire to look in. Thank you very much for your super chat. Um, Scott, this may not be allowed, it's, wait a second, it's allowed, I don't see any problem with that, it's just, I'm not really sure what do you mean shopping mall X incident, your feelings on it, <laughs> not the act itself, uh, if anything really bad happened recently, I haven't heard of it, I checked the news a couple hours ago and there was nothing in the news, Hang on, um, perhaps I should check real quick right now. Nothing. I'm not sure what 
shopping mall accident <laughs> you mean i'm sorry please specify ultra sassy becca welcome back uh great to see you mona from southern california As usual suspects Th thanks thanks for coming back thank you looking for um Alan Medina, thank you for $2. Uh, you heard today a uh, WNBA player is in Russian court. No, I did not. I know that there's a WNBA star is detained in Russia, and she was trying, as far as I know, uh, she was trying to, she was traveling with uh, medical marijuana, which is highly illegal here in Russia. And she was caught with it, and she she's detained and charged with breaking the law. Well, if it's true, if she was caught with medical marijuana, <laughs> then if... Same thing, American, Russian, you know, Iranian, whatever. That's a huge offense here. Porcupine, $10. Dark-minded, don't see it, stupid, no way fat no but ugly i think but is an extreme check <laughs> funny <laughs> i got you thanks for the super chat you know pretty cool bombi 1138 says hello fellow enemies <laughs> that's funny I have two kids in the United States, Americans, so they must be my enemies too, right? <laughs> yeah, I gotta call Jake and say, hey, uh, son, <laughs> are you gonna attack us anytime soon? Um, Pure Tone, good evening. Ludmila from London, hello, hello. Jeffrey S., and the answer is FECZ in 612, thank you. Stefan Holler, thanks again. A very good view on it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hello, everyone from Joy. Where are you in the world? Great question. Where are you in the world? I am in the south of Russia. Yodi Racer from Las Vegas. Howdy, howdy. U.S. Tennessee, Marsha. Howdy. Ultra Sessi Becca, thank you so much. Yes, please like this video and please share this video with everyone in your social networks, in Facebook, which is considered an extremist company, uh, terrorist organization here in Russia. Merely four years ago, Facebook was okay. Three months, oh, not four years, four months ago. Three months ago, Facebook was perfectly legal, fine. And then just like that, it becomes a terrorist organization. Welcome to Russia, circa 2022. Lorna is here. Yahoo was listening. Question from sponsor. Oh, no, there's a new sponsor, Pacific Rim Overlanders. Welcome to Inside Russia. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Please come to Friday sponsor only live stream. Uh, usually very few people and much slower pace and uh, every single question is answered and then we have a usually pretty fun conversation and then if you join us on the live stream you will find the star of the live streams reese gray he's gonna be here there may rag do you often go to church not often uh but do Probably two, three times a month, something like that. Um, RW, thank you so much. Mall would break rules. I just want to say that your topics of late have been profound and moving. Thank you. You sit in the most difficult chair. Oh, yeah, thank you for recognizing that. But you do a good job of occupying that seat with grace and wisdom. RW. Thank you for $20. Money is great. 
Okay, with the way the things are going right now, money is needed more than ever. But your message is definitely is worth every single gram in gold. Okay. <sighs> Thank you. Fantastic message. Messages like this really uplift me and give me motivation and energy energy to keep on going. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm not sure how well I do. I sometimes fail to deliver messages. People misunderstand me. But you know what? I feel like I'm one of the very few people who actually stand up and say things these days who are here inside of Russia. Um, so thank you. Thank you. I really am trying. D1 Harris, $5. Russia symbolic defaulted on their debt. First time since 1918. Stay strong. That's that's just a completely different video or live stream. Now, um, let me acknowledge a super chat from Ultra Sassy Becca. $10. Been in the hospital with my husband for a few weeks, but we're all good now. Check on KVD, KGB, all the same with different names and the same purpose. Suppress, spy, and control information. I'm glad you're back. Thank you so much. Um, I might have missed your messages if you let me know about that. I'm sorry. But really great to see you back. Thank you for the money. Thank you for the, for the message. The previous message was Russia defaulting dead for the first time since 1918. But you know what Russians are saying? They're saying, we did not default. We have so much money. It's $100 million. It's, it's crazy. You know, this is not defaulting. The Western country is doing it to themselves. They're not letting us pay. Okay? So we're not defaulting. They're just labeling us defaulting. I am sitting here in the morning all day, and I'm thinking, is this me who's crazy? Or there's something wrong with them, or perhaps it must be me, because, you know, this, what I'm reading, does not make so much sense that it's crazy, okay? So, um, according to you, <laughs> fine people, Russia defaulted for the first time since 1918. According to Russia and Russian government, no. Everything's normal, no default. And they're just trying to give Russia a bad name. And I kid you not, that that's what's happening. Oh. Sandy, hello, Papa Bear. I do not hold that as happening to individual, individual person, uh, Russians, to individual Russian people. Thank you very much, Cindy. Thank you. There's a message from New Zealand, two minutes to midnight. Thank you so much. Very much appreciated. Five dollars. Much needed these days. Joe, do you believe that Russia found itself in a catch-22 situation? There are different groups in Russia some of them, like, for example, people, they might find themselves in the catch-22 situation, but some people are actually doing very good, and they're feeling very well, and then they're the ones who are behind these things. So, depends on uh, who you're talking to. Bommy, love Mr. K, even though I am your <laughs> favorite enemy. Yeah, you're not my enemy. Everywhere I traveled, I saw friends. I saw nice people. I saw some buttholes, but you know what? <laughs> Just, it's people everywhere else. Most people were absolutely fine. Fantastic, loving. Even in Iran, people were actually friendly. <laughs> Most people were friendly on a personal level. Um, so you're not my enemy. I know you're joking, but just, you know what? You're, you're friends. <sighs> Jerry Nelson, hello from Canada. Buddy, howdy, howdy. Mods, thank you very much for what you do, says Scott Nasbit, and I second that. Thank you very much. Hello from Hot 
Reno, Nevada. Uh, hello, Reno, and uh, this is some love for you from Hot Rostov and Don. Laura, howdy, howdy from Kentucky. Guido, look at the wonderful space station we built together. I know, I know. I keep asking myself this question all over again. That's why don't we cooperate? We can do so much. We can do so much better if we cooperate, if we join forces. I don't... It just beats me. You know, it's crazy. Arnis, uh, thank you so much, 15 euro. You're from the Baltics, right? Um, Arnis, Arnis, must be from Lithuania, Estonia or Latvia. Greetings, Konstantin, great, as, great video as usual. Anyway, I can get in touch. Uh, I have a problem in Russia that you could solve. Benefit to you also, nothing dodgy, legal or anything like that, just business. Um, look, if I can help you, uh, I, I will. Uh, drop me email. My email address is, is in the about section if you go with your computer. Um, if I can help without significant use of time, then I don't even want to talk about money. That'd be just help, you know. So drop me a line. Abacus, thank you. Democratic countries have knowledge-based economies. Russia have natural resource-based economy. Is Russia too focused on natural resource reserves? Well, Russia is obviously focused on natural resources reserves. Uh, it's been pumping natural resources out of and extracting out of earth and selling, exporting. But I tell you what, I have a feeling, not for long, for perhaps a few more months, and that's it. And then, towards the end of 22, and then in the beginning of 23, then we're going to start having real, real economic troubles. You know, Abacus and everyone, right now, I tell you what, what's happening. I'm having a perfect summer, a summer to remember. Um, I'm not talking about this bad feelings I have, depression, uh, worrying about everything, you know, hurting from what is happening in Ukraine, stuff like that. No, I'm trying to remember worry-free in terms of money because I have still have a job, not for long, most likely, but still have it. I get some money from YouTube as an extra income. Um, it's worry-free in terms of I don't see people starving. I don't see people going homeless and stuff like that. So we're still okay financially. We're still doing well. It's the earthquake happened in February and the uh, tsunami is coming, but it's not here yet completely. We start seeing the waves already, people losing job and everything, jobs and everything, but we're still okay. And I'm trying to remember this as the best time of Russia that, you know, is going to end <laughs> fairly soon. I am more than sure that next summer is going to be absolutely different. So every single day I try to film for myself, for my family. I try to, you know, make memories, good memories. I try to spend quality time with the girls and Michael. And this is the last summer of goodness so to speak you know reese gray thank you so much for five dollars kind of crazy events considered but lately i keep thinking how strong yours and my nations could be if we were allies like we are with the u.s so said now reese again i keep asking the same question if we could be united if we could work together you know gosh we could just move mountains We did. Look look at the wonderful thing we did in space. 
incredible. It's such a waste. What kind of wood is your desk? <laughs> I don't know, miss me. I'm sorry. Um, just hardwood, some kind. Guy, how does Reese Gray get in first every time? Because he's a legend. You know, try to do it every single stream, and then you'll be there too for in, in about two months. Jasmine... Constantine, greats from Canada, are supposed to be enemies, our friends are opposite. We're humans, we have hearts that are absolutely same, and we have love in our hearts, and you love children as much as we love children, and it's the same kind of love, you know, we love our spouses, we love our parents, we love our kids, we just love to have fun. We love to have a good life. Um, we get along with our neighbors. We're absolutely same. Two minutes to midnight. I wanted to say yesterday that I thought <laughs> you were very topic brave. Keep being awesome. Thank you. Thank you. This message is from me, a mom of twin girls who will be future, future women navigating this crazy world we live. Thank you, Two Minutes to Midnight. Um, you know, it was actually a brave thing to bring up that topic, because if you look at the comments that I received, whoa, someone said I would open a can of worms. Well, it was opened. But uh, I guess it could have been worse. It's not that bad. But the, the topic itself is very, very controversial. Anyway, two minutes to midnight. Thank you so much for um, the super chat. And thank you for actually coming here and being such a great member of the community. I appreciate the message. Miss me when September comes. Love that song. Uh, thank you. I will listen. Uh, let me make a note. I will listen to it after the stream. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dirk, five Canadian dollars. Don't let's stop all the fighting. Have a massive potluck and plan out the massive moon base, friend. Um, I also would like to play uh, Russia and Canada play hockey. Okay, every single week. How about that? D1 Harris. <laughs> so one step back. Uh, Derek, um, and all Canadians out there, all right, guys and girls, there's a funny, funny, there's a newspaper in Russia dedicated. It's like Sports Illustrated, but it's a daily newspaper. And uh, it has a huge, huge part of it dedicated to ice hockey. And then there was an article a couple of days ago. Oh, you know what? Great news. Because in two years, Canada is organizing the Canada Cup again. Oh, that's going to be great. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you, you actually think that Russians will be allowed and welcomed and invited to the Canada Cup in two years? <laughs> you must be absolutely insane. Oh, that's just... I don't know what to do. To actually laugh or to cry. D1 Harris, well, the West pushed Russia into the arms of China. That's true. Has been pushing, I would say. China have Russia back. There are definitely worries. Konstantin, keep up great work. Thank you so much, D1. It's a different topic. I talk about China. I don't understand why West was pushing Russia into the hands of Chinese. Uh, it, was, it should have been pulling Russia into its uh, sphere of influence. Uh, I was pushing it out, so... Pete Vers uh, Ver Versaggi. Versaggi. I like the name. Thank you so much. Um, $5. That's that's um, pretty strong and powerful message itself. I see that little uh, avatar laughing. No message. Thank you so much, Donna. Great to see you.
watching time. Bob S. is not here today. But I act as if he was. Because I uh, imagine that right now he would be telling me, Constantine, you know, watch time. Abacus, rest of the world plan to get fossil free SAP. So with your heavy gas and oil dependency, how on earth should Russia join that movement? It's not about the dependent of... It's not so much about the dependent. It's whether Russia joins the movement or doesn't join, doesn't matter. What really matters for Russia is it will not sell any more gas and oil. We get most of our money from the sale, the exporting of gas, natural gas and oil. And all of a sudden, bada bang, bada boom, no one wants to buy it anymore. What are we going to do? It's like we shot itself on both legs. I've said it like 10 times already. I had streams about that. Good point. Thank you. Uh, uh, Gideon Ewers, thank you so much for $20. That's a pretty strong message that you just sent me. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Amir, solid kudos to you handling of yesterday's sensitive topic. Expertly handled. I was just following my heart. You know, I wasn't trying to handle anything. You know, I was just telling as I felt as it was coming from my heart. The topic was very heavy. Uh, I don't like abortions, but I also would hate to see women stripped of their rights. And it's a difficult topic. Okay. It's not black and white. And, um, I just did the best I could, basically. That's it. Don Walters, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, G, isn't India and China going to buy the gas and oil? That's been quite... Uh, well, a drama in trying to sell gas and oil. Uh, they both go back and forth. One day they say, no, we will buy more. Another say, another day they back out a little bit. But the bottom line is both China and Russia. Well, they're not, they're not buying Russian gas because in order to sell gas to China and uh, especially India, you need pipelines. You need the entire infrastructure. And it's built indicates it's not built instantly like that you know so no no natural gas but oil possibly it's just we're selling them oil with a huge huge discount otherwise they wouldn't buy it okay now oil is crazily expensive okay and most likely we're still making money but once the oil drops down then we won't be making any money or very little money from from selling oil to um, both China and India. Those guys are going to suck us dry out of our money. I'm telling you, they just going to um, they just going to leave us penniless, okay? They going to benefit themselves cuz I know these countries. I worked, well I tried to work with Chinese and um the, the the Indians to just, just better stay away from them. That's all. They're good people, but just it's when you deal with them, it's not you who make money, it's them. Um, Scott, a good quick question. When do you feel US will have will be in recession and how long will it go for uh can't tell you much about the uh, the usa uh i can redirect you to pinball preparedness lorna mommy if you could could you please give a link to pinball's channel he does great videos on uh upcoming recession and in general and state of the economy so go and uh watch and listen to pinball he'll tell you much more than i do about the usa I just can tell you, I hope <laughs> it's not going to be soon, and I hope it's not going to be long if it happens. 
David Moyers, thank you so much. From Parish, Florida, governments find and fight enemies for the common people find only friends. Excellent message. Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you. Jesus Mendoza, or Jesus Mendoza, is Russia perceived as the enemy of by NATO? Uh, I don't know. Ask NATO. Ask 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 uh, our fellow enemies in this chat. <laughs> Mindzai, nineteen fifty one. Hey Constantine, Mike from Michigan. Enjoy your insights. Um, minute and we will go into the prayer Deborah Kos, Kosa thank you so much Captain Corto humanitarian values must be commonly respected I could not agree more about that Bertie S. Hi, Constantine. What is the 22nd, 22 impact of Russia's renewable energy industry? Great channel. Congrats. Thank you. What is the 22 impact on Russia's renewable energy industry? 22. What is the 22? I don't really quite understand. I'm sorry. <sighs> Holy be Jesus. I love the name. Uh, Germany and Russia are natural allies in Europe, but for that, Russia has to change some things. Well, holy be Jesus, you know, Germany and Russia were natural allies in Europe. Not any longer. Geeky Carlis, thank you so much. Craig, revisit your vid next super enemy. Wow, looking now, you are right. Thank you so much. Well, unfortunately, I'm right, you know, uh, but I am right. Porcupine, how do you know? Bada bada boom. <laughs> bada bang, bada boom. Well, uh, look, I lived in the USA for a long, long time. I know, I know these things. Coffee cake. What do Russians know about Germany? What What do Russian? If you're asking me, what do I know about Germany? Uh, not much, except for my wife is German, half German. My mother-in-law is half German, and um, you know, tons of relatives in Germany, and I've been to Germany, and you know, so I know a lot about Germany. R other Russians, I'm not sure. Okay, as as much as I am enjoying the stream, I've got to wrap it up and um, move to the prayer. The last question from CDR, how is the airline industry in Russia? Asking from Canada, not well. Russia's not, Russian airlines pro not not flying almost anywhere in the world because... You know, most Russian planes are, well, not Russian, are 
made in Canada, uh, made in the USA and in Europe, Boeing and Airbus, and they're leased, <laughs> and the leasers uh, are in the West, and every time a plane lands in a foreign country, most likely that plane will be arrested, so Russian uh, airlines are flying domestically now, and that's pretty much it. Um, so, not well. My friends, I would like to join you. Oh, there's a super chat from Konstantin Dorn. Thank you so much for, for the super chat. Much appreciated, much needed. Ah... <sighs> Before we go into the prayers, good question. Preda boat. If things go more and more bad for Russia, the Chinese companies take over more of Russia. Do you think that China would want their contested territories back? Oh, yes, they would. And oh, yes, they will. You got to be absolutely blind and have lack of common sense to actually not see that, that China would definitely want some of Russia territories back. My friends, would you please join me in prayer? I would like to pray um, a little different again today, just like we did yesterday. I would like to join you if you're a believer, and if you're a non-believer, atheist, or just don't believe in God, Please join us anyway, send good wishes and send good energy and good vibes to people that we're praying for along with us. Please do. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us a wonderful Monday. Thank you for giving us food on our tables. Thank you for giving our roofs on our, above our heads. Thank you for sending and surrounding good people, surrounding us with good people, the loved ones, friends, family, um, colleagues, just regular good folks, neighbors. Thank you. Please help stop bloodshed in Ukraine as soon as possible. Please reach out and touch the hearts of people who are responsible to make the decision or decisions to stop the bloodshed. Please fill their hearts with mercy remorse, forgiveness, kindness. Please do not let anyone to be harmed in Ukraine any longer. Please do not let any more blood to be shed um, I am asking for Vladimir Putin, please reach out and touch his heart, fill it, his heart with love, forgiveness, kindness, so he makes decision to stop this bloodshed. Send angels to Ukraine, to every single person who needs your help. Send angels to protect every single Ukrainian soldiers, Ukrainian soldiers, Russian soldiers out of harm's way, and so no more lives are lost, no more lives uh, are broken, no more blood is shed. <sighs> Please help my country, Russia. Send your strongest angels with sharpened swords, led by St. Michael to get rid of the demons, had that have hijacked my country, and have angels run it, have angels help Russia become righteous and shine again. Please reach out every single woman in the world right now who is pregnant in trying to make a decision whether to have an abortion or not. Please feel every woman like that in that position with right thoughts, feel 
their hearts with the right feelings so they make the right decision that is going to be good for everyone please help us raise our children the way that when they grow up they will make this world a better place and they will never fight with one another just be friends and love one each other thank you for bringing us here in this live stream as a virtual community thank you so much um, please thank you for giving us opportunity to pray together please reach out everyone here our prayers answer our prayers and make our wishes come true please i would like to mention a few people who reached out and asked um, they need your help and they need help of every one of us who is in the stream praying right now they simply need their prayers to be answered so i'm asking you to uh, ask and pray for these people too they are nine veka um, elena natasha jake michael olia dasha sky igor buzz and mary jean paul paula janine michael um, marlene maddie Narnian Lady, Freddy, Susan S, Sabrina, Stephen, Ellen, Chirper, Madeline, Fiona, Susan, Jasper, Priscilla, Michelin, Martin, um, Donald from Wisconsin, USA, who is asking for himself and for his country, the USA, Ariana, Liz, Bruce B. Um, I have a special request for three kids. They are Maverick, Sebastian, and Britzel. Britzel is very ill, and her and her family asking for your help. They're asking you to perform a miracle and send to make her feel better and send her home to where her family is awaiting her. I also would like to ask for Kayleen um, she recently lost her husband and she had twins she's in a dire situation please give her strength and gi give her all the help she needs and also I'd like to ask for Michael whose mom passed away f asking for him and his mom um, give Michael strength and give his mom eternal life and um, please take care of her out there thank you so much thank you amen my friends thank you very much for joining me thanks for listening to my message commenting um, sending some money very much appreciated and thank you for joining me in prayer as usual there's another message tomorrow and hopefully i'll be able to finish the video and uh, the i will in case i do i will premiere it right after the stream thank you so very much you're awesome and you rock please keep on coming back for more that's it for today